Unlike lamps, when you change the direction of the motor, they obviously change direction, and that changes something. Um, so it's important to know what direction our motor is going to spin in. So let's go into the test interface up here, and let's test our motor out. So let's try motor 1, CW, and you can see uh, that lifts it up. And that puts it back down. So let's lower the speed a little bit. Okay, that's a more manageable speed. We'll try that speed. Great. So that was motor 1, speed 4, and counterclockwise clock clockwise lifts the device up and counterclockwise puts it down. Clockwise up, counterclockwise down. Okay. So let's uh, make a new program. Drop our start man in there. And we can remember he's going to walk out of there on the blue line and he's going to do every every block he encounters. So let's drop motor 1 over there. Um, and we want it to be at speed 4 down at the bottom there. Speed is 4 and clockwise. Okay. And we want him to do that for one second. Let's see what happens there. And then we want him to stop. So right click, action, stop, OK. And you can see um, when you choose stop, speed obviously doesn't matter. And then we'll stop the program. Let's see how that goes. OK, that works quite nicely. Program terminated OK. And if we run it again, it's obviously going to move all the way back there. Now you can see if I run it again now, the motor um, w the the motor won't be able to move it because it's going to have crashed into the motor itself. Um, that'll actually start damaging the motor. So if your motor is on and it's not moving, turn it off or stop your program because it's going to damage the motor and the motor will break. So let's try and move it in the opposite direction now. So remember we can change the properties by going right click, motor output, still M1, action, CCW. So now if we run it, it should move back. Now it's halfway, one more time, and it's all the way. Okay, so now we want it to move backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards until we tell it to stop manually. So you can remember he, this little man is going to walk along the blue line, he's going to do every block he encounters. So we want to tell him to go back to the top like we did with the flashing light. So to start off with, let's delete this little thing here. And you can see that it doesn't select the M1 stop block. It only selects the blocks that fall fully within the dotted red line. So do that, and then I'm going to push the delete key on my keyboard. Okay, so clockwise, wait one second, and I want to change this one to counter uh, to clockwise, and wait one more second, because obviously if we don't wait that second, we won't notice anything happening here. It'll turn it to it'll turn it to clockwise and then back to counterclockwise instantly. So we won't notice the effect because we're super slow humans. So let's move this all down a little bit to keep our program neat. And click there, click there, click there, click there, and click there. And you can see I've got a little little skew line there. I'm just going to move that back. So let's see what that one does, shall we? Whoopsie doopsie. That's not working so well. Why? M1 is still speed 8. So let's keep that clockwise and let's put that back to speed 4. Now let's put our arm back to the midway position. So I'm going to put it on super slow. And put it back there. There we go. Let's run that now. Okay, perfect. Now you know how to control motors.